So something that I think MapleStory does very poorly is create guides for new players. But a lot of the new player guides are kind of like how to progress in a theoretical way, you know, how to get the gear, how to get to end game. But no one really made a guide on how to make your way through all of these little UIs and how to navigate through the game because, I don't know, it's kind of hard to learn that and hard to explain that. So I thought I'd show you your first realistic hour of being a MapleStory player. So we're going to choose the reboot server. I don't advise any of these other worlds. I think the reboot server is the most most playable at this point. Um, but you can do your other research on those other servers, but just know that reboot server is just, it's the tits. So when you log into reboot and choose your channel, you're not going to see all of these characters, but I'm going to start a new character so that way we can progress it together. And I'm going to explain all of the little things you need to know, how to upgrade your stats, how to keybind your stuff, because keybinds, as you're going to see, are very, very important. And we're going to start off with an explore class. And so if you remember the explore classes um, when you played as a little kid, like I did in 2006 in sixth grade, um, you'll know these characters. But the game has created so many characters at this point, you're going to see that there's like a little stat window under the explanation of the character, but there's like a character for everyone. Don't really pay attention to those stats. Just pick the class that suits your identity, right? Because these stats, the ones the game designers put up there, mm -mm. <laughs> that's not true. Don't listen to the stats. It's so deceiving. So we're going to create our character and let's see, clay skin. I feel like that kind of matches me, I think. The OG eyes and let's go Tobin hair all the way. Gotta have Tobin hair. I'm not playing, by the way. I'm just watching the VOD, seeing what I do, so that way I can explain everything for you. And I think this is going to be the most helpful way to get you to learn. We're making our character name Bikini Bottom. <laughs> I think that gives you a little hint as to what class I'm going to choose. <sighs> so basic keys and secondary keys. It's kind of like, hmm, basic keys is like the OG setup for MapleStory. Secondary keys, on the other hand, are for people who are familiar with other online games, but I'm just gonna go with the basic keys. It really doesn't matter. I think the thing that really, really matters the most is just setting your keybinds to what's gonna be most comfortable for you. So you're gonna see a lot of dialogue in this game, and to be honest, everyone just skips the dialogue, so we're just spamming our keyboard. And pressing the keys will just like eliminate those little lines. And so even, Dialogue right here. If you want to read all this, that's cool. But the dialogue, everyone just pretty much skips this. And I'll show you how to skip that in a little bit. So there we are. There's our bikini bottom. Talking to Suga. <laughs> hey, Suga. All right. See, I'm just like clicking it. Like I don't GAF about whatever the hell Suga is saying. Come on, hurry up. I want to get started. Okay. So here we are. All that dialogue is done. And you're going to see a little bit of UIs, but... No one reads in this game, so no one's going to read the UIs, right? Everyone wants... In 2023, what people want is an intuitive system that, like, you know how to use it, right? Like, you buy an iPhone, and it's like, okay, I know how to use it. The things look easy to press, blah, blah, blah. But in MapleStory, it's not like that at all. So first thing you want to get comfortable with is using your arrow keys on your keyboard to move your character. I know other games have, like, WASD, but that's just not what it is for MapleStory. And then the slash button that's above your enter key, you're going to want to click that right away because we're going to set our keybinds. So the keybinds are so important and you're going to see me move a lot of things away that aren't necessary. Like going to the cash shop, I don't need a keybind for that. And the, the way you're going to remove things is just by doing the right click and then you can move things around, customizing it however I want to by just using my mouse. So what I suggest you really get comfortable with key binding and memorizing the key binds for these specific things are the button on how to get back to your key bind, whatever you set that to. And then I, items, K, skills, J, stats, U, equipment. That's what I have for me. Um, what also is important is D for jump. I use that for my jump key. A lot of people use space, alts. Um, some people use control, but I don't know. I just like jump on D. Ooh, that sounds kind of weird. And then pick up, I have for S to pick up items in the, you know, early stages of the game before you get a pet, because pets later on can help you pick up items along the way, but you're going to do it manually for these first few quests that we're going to see. And then I have my attack on control. 
There are other things that you can probably just pause my video and then see what I have laid out and see what I don't have laid out. But those, you know, few things that I just mentioned are going to be, be the most important things for you to get comfortable with starting to navigate all of these UIs in the Maple world. So now that we've done the keybinds, you can go ahead and talk to Sugar, which is going to have a quest for you. You can see that through her light bulb. And I'm talking to Sugar just by you. Oh, I didn't mention NPC chat. The thing that is most important though, like knowing where your item inventory is and your stats, that's all good and stuff. But one of the best things to have memorized for your keybinds is where I have on V, interact slash harvest. That's usually on the space bar when you start the game, but interact slash harvest is gonna allow you to interact with NPCs and harvest things that you see along the way. Pretty self-explanatory, I guess. But as you can see right here, I press that button and it lets me talk to the NPC that has a quest for me. So you know that this person has a quest for you because right above her head, she has the light bulb, right? And so you can talk to her and it says a re it's a required quest. And then you can see, since I already played this game and I have an explore on my account already, I already did this quest on another character. And so I'm gonna accept this quest just so that way we can do it together. But a lot of the times you can just skip things that you've already done before. So that goes for unlocking certain areas in the game and also unlocking bosses later down the line. So now we're just gonna follow these arrows. And as you can see, I'm showing you how to jump down. So it's just whatever your jump key is and then go down. You can navigate platforms that way. You don't always have to use a rope or you can just, you know, fall off the ledge. That's cool too. And then we're going to talk to Sugar by using our interact key. There's a range on how far the interact key goes. So that's why I had to jump and then use the button. So now let's continue on with this quest, just some dialogue. And you can see I'm skipping all of the dialogue by just holding down my NPC chat. Do you see the chat boxes come up and go really fast? It's because I'm skipping all of them by just holding down the NPC chat button, which I keybinded to V. If you're just starting out and this is your first time, it's gonna be keybinded to your spacebar. So now we're just walking, following the arrows for the quest. And as you can see, it tells you that you can press up on some portals. And then you're gonna see Sugar again, she's moved. And we're just gonna use some potions too. You can keybind anything in your item inventory. So for me, I just pressed my keybind for I. That opened up the item inventory. And then I'm going to use my potions and put them on a keybind themselves. So I like having my potions on spacebar because, you know, if you're in a sticky situation and you need to potion up, it's just the biggest key on the keyboard. So that's going to keep you safe. And as you can see, you can just open your inventory and sort through the tabs, you know, by using your tab key, just like you can on like other games and web browsers and stuff like that. So now the game is telling you to get five snail shells. So this is where you got to you know, accept the quest. You can press Y or N to accept or decline things. And so a lot of people have their NPC chat on Y. And so that way, like they can hold down the button and it will auto accept things. But I like to have my NPC chat on something that isn't Y or N because I don't want to auto accept things or auto decline things at face value, right? I like to like read what it's going to tell me to do because that's usually the last thing in the dialogue when you're holding down that NPC chat button. So we gathered five snail shells. I was using my keybind for pick up items, which is important, and using my attack key keybind to kill the mobs. Pretty easy, pretty easy. And so once we've turned that in, we have some more little videos for us. Honestly, MapleStory has really great art. Even though they don't make great guides, they have the best art, they have the best music, and also they have like, some of the best cosmetics, like if you want to drip out your character. So we're going through town and you can see that there's this little arrow above my head just telling me where to go. And you, you can see on the top right of the screen that I have like my buff bar, it says that I have the arrow buffed on me. And so you can right click that if you want to get rid of it. But I think in the early game, the arrow is really important. So you can press up on the portal and we're gonna see another NPC, Mai. She is an old school NPC. She's been here since like the game first started. This is a pretty classic area of MapleStory. And so Mai gave me an item and so I can use it by double clicking it and then it's gonna give me some potions, which is cool. I also have some equipment that you can just equip by double clicking on them. Pretty easy, pretty easy. So for anything in that use tab, you can actually keybind it most of the time 
and then your equipment you just you know put it on by double clicking can't really keybind equipment in this game so we're going to continue on the little arrow is telling us what to do he's being very helpful and we're just going to continue on up this portal and if i wanted to change channels you can actually change channels by pressing escape and then enter I like to do things with my keyboard. Getting used to your keyboard is very, very important in MapleStory. In MapleStory, we don't really use our mouse for anything. Like having to use your mouse is just such a chore in MapleStory. Pretty much everything can be done with your keyboard. Bossing, mobbing with your class. But there are some things that we have to use our mouse for, like going through our inventory, clicking on NPCs that may be far from us. So this video popped up and I'm just gonna press escape and then enter, cause that video, it could jump scare you because <laughs> the volume is pretty high, but it's like a YouTube video that just plays within the game's browser. So I'm just holding down my NPC chat because I don't want to read any of this dialogue. I just want to get started with the gameplay, get my character's job going. Job or class is pretty much interchangeable in this game. And so we're going to talk to Sugar and she's going to ask us, what type of explorer do you want to be? So in the beginning at the character select screen, I chose explore, right? And so now it's asking me what sub-branch of the explorers I want to be. And I chose pirate. So when you click something on the character select screen, sometimes when you click on a job such as like Kane, there's only one subdivision of Kane. So if you choose Kane, that's just what it's going to be. But for classes like explorers and um, Cygnus Knights, those have their own sub-branches. And there are other sub-branches on that list too. So just take a look at those and just read the descriptions. I'm choosing a pirate, and the class that we're ultimately going to be is a buccaneer. So as a buccaneer, you have to use a knuckle. And then I also open up my stats, which I use J. So you can see that I'm going to auto-assign my stats. And going through the list of stats, we have strength, dex, int, and luck. So that's pretty cool, but for a buccaneer, buccaneers scale off of strength. And so I'm just going to auto-assign using the Brawler setting. Brawler is for Buccaneer, and then Gunslinger is for Corsair, if those two classes interest you. But if you're another class, you're probably only gonna see one auto-assign button, and so just do whatever the auto-assign tells you to do. Rarely do we have to manually assign stats in this game. Usually when you're using your ability points, which you get every time that you level up, you're just gonna auto-assign all the way. So now let's open up our skills by pressing K on the keyboard. And so skills, we have a beginner tab, and then we also have tabs for each job advancement. And so since we just reached level 10, we got our first job. And so I'm gonna level up my mobbing skill by one, and then we can keybind that. So you don't have to use skills um, through the menu. You can use skills on your keyboard. That's something that I didn't understand when I was like first playing this game. I'm also gonna assign flash jump, which you can use by keybinding it, or you can just double tap your jump key, but I'm gonna keybind it. I like to keybind it on E, so that way I have my flash jump very close to my uh, jump button. And then I'm also gonna assign some stats for critical rate. Critical rate is pretty important to try to max out as fast as you can. It's gonna give you a lot of damage. Okay, so now that we have some skills assigned, let's actually continue on with this quest. And so I clicked the light bulb above my head and the quest is asking me, do you want to skip this? Because I already did it on another character, right? And so this time I am going to skip this because I want to just show you guys the nitty gritty of actually killing mobs and leveling up by just hitting some monsters, which is probably what you want to do, right? And so I'm going to take this taxi. Pretty much all of the main towns in this first starting area have the taxis. And so I'm going to click the quick move if like you don't know where the NPC is and then you can go to the taxi. So I'm gonna go to Hennessy's. Hennessy's is like one of the most iconic areas of Maple Story. Like this is where everyone just started out. And I'm gonna equip my weapon. I'm gonna open up my item inventory and equip my weapon. I have a gun there and a knuckle there, but you can use a knuckle for Buccaneer or Brawler. And so remember, I skill keybinded my mobbing skill on shift. And so I'm gonna use shift and then hit this monster right here. Pretty cool. I'm gonna pick up some mesos and items along the way. Awesome, don't worry about picking up everything. I'm just showing you the basics. And then you can see that there's this like NPC here that has a quest for me. 
You don't have to do all quests in this game, like it's just optional, but since I'm killing these monsters anyways, and it's telling me that I can just get some EXP by killing these monsters that I'm already killing, I mean, why not, right? So I'm just going to use my skill, and as you can see, I can use my skill just whenever I want. Pretty cool, right? It doesn't have a cooldown. There are a lot of skills in this game that do have kill, uh, skill cooldowns, and so you have to wait to use them. So there's that NPC telling me that I just did some KOs. Pretty cool, pretty cool. If only you told more relevant imp information, NPC lady. That's why I'm making this video. I'm doing your job for you. Now let's do the quest completion, and it gave me some earrings and some EXP. Awesome, I leveled up. So these earrings I can't wear yet because I'm not level 15. So once I'm level 15, I'll be able to use those. But yeah, let's go to another map now. A lot of these maps look like the old school maps if you remember playing back in the day. I first started MapleStory in 2006 when I was in sixth grade. My friends at the time, uh, they, when they found out that I got a computer with, with the internet, they were like, you gotta, you gotta make a MySpace. You gotta make AIM, AOL Instant Messenger, and you gotta play MapleStory. Those were the three things that they told me to do. And I guess one of those things stuck without me, or with me throughout my life, right? Still playing Maple. But yeah, every time you every time you level up, um, you're gonna get some ability points. You're gonna get some skill points as well. So just remember to always assign your stats. And so I'm gonna continue assigning stuff. I'm gonna max out my flash jump. I find that maxing out your flash jump pretty early on is pretty important. More important than maxing out your mobbing skill. Like unless your mobbing skill is struggling to do damage to the mobs, I would just always do things that give you more mobility. Mobility, dang that word's hard. Just uh, max things out that give you more mobility and then also critical rate. Critical rate is pretty important. Cause you can see my hits are doing like the yellow numbers and then sometimes it does the red number. That's critical rate. The red ones are the critical hits. Ooh, those did all the critical hits. You might see my character be relatively stronger than your character at this point, but that's just because my account has passive buffs. And so as you level other characters, you can get some passive buffs. So don't be afraid to try a character and then be like, oh, I need to abandon it, but I feel too bad to abandon it. Oh my god, you know, the game does benefit you for leveling up other characters through the Legion system and the Link skill system, which is something that I would take note of. Like if you want a, if you want to take a little note on your notepad or whatever, make sure that once you feel more comfortable with navigating the game, that you start looking up Legion and Link skills. Look up some guides for that because because there are many guides on that. So I'm just exploring the Maple area still and seeing what mobs there are. And now we're at this, um, map with some pink golems and so in the early game i wouldn't really worry about so much as far as like am i killing the right mobs am i you know doing this or doing that correctly just like get comfortable exploring the world get comfortable using your keyboard how to move your character how to hit the mobs that's what you should really be learning in the early stages of playing maple story in your first hour of maple story as we're calling this video so if the grind starts to become too slow, then you can start looking for another map, but I feel like here, it's kind of nice. And I'm not sure if this is the most optimal area, but I like this area. This area is pretty cool. Map is relatively small. I feel like by the time the mobs spawn again, I can, you know, get everything cleared, which is pretty nice. And so you want to look for a map where you feel like you're clearing. Uh, enough of the mobs in time for them to spawn back in again. That's like the essence of farming in MapleStory. In the early game, not all of your skills are going to be blowing up the entire map like it does in the later game, but, you know, the size of this map I feel like, like is perfect for anyone who has their first job. Remember to drink water when you're playing MapleStory. So I'm just maxing out some of my skills since um, I got some skill points by leveling up. And don't worry about like, oh, am I organizing things and leveling things up in the accurate order? Because at the end of the day, you're going to max all of your skills. Whether it's relevant to you or not, you're going to max all of your skills with the skill points that they give you. So now let's do some gear. As you can see, I have some gear in my item inventory. Some of it has a red outline around it. And 
others don't. So that little line, it's basically a line of potential. So once you unlock that red line and unveil what the potential is, that's how you're going to know what the bonus stats are, right? So let's use the magnifying glass at the bottom of the item inventory and then unlock the potential. And you can see that at the bottom, bottom it gives strength plus 1%. So since I'm a pirate class, particularly a buccaneer or a brawler at the moment, that's relevant stats for me. So ideally you get stuff for your stat, but in the early game it really doesn't matter what your gear looks like. The mobs are going to drop so many gear sets along the way that you're just going to be rotating your gear so much in these early stages of the game as you're like pre-level 100. So don't worry if you're like not doing things the right way. I also have some bullets in my item inventory. They give you that in case you want to go the route of a gunslinger, but since I'm not, I'm just going to drop these bullets. And you can drop things by just dragging it out of the inventory. And sometimes things will say, are you sure you want to drop this? It will disappear completely if you do. But other items, as you can see here, I can drop those and still pick them back up. And other players in the reboot world aren't going to be able to pick things up because they won't see them, right? Because in this world, in reboot, trading between players is not allowed. So that's why if you drop something, they wouldn't be able to see it anyways. So there's a new map that I want to go to, and I'm going to double click that map or the uh, area on my world map, which I key bound to the little apostrophe thingy next to your one key. I don't know what that's called, but I opened up my world map and then there's this map that I want to go to, the curse eyes. So I double clicked that map and now that you can see, I have a arrow above my head and that's going to tell me where to go. So I know that it's going to want me to walk to Hennessy's and then we're going to walk to some other maps. And so I'm just going to use this scroll that I had lying around in my inventory, which they give you at the early start of the game. They give you that for free. And it's just a return to, to the town scroll. And so I don't have to walk back to the main town manually. I can just use that scroll. And of course, we're going to use the taxi like we did earlier in the video. So we're going to do the taxi and then we're going to take it to Alinea. And now that we're in Alinea, we can basically use the arrow to our advantage. As you can see, I didn't lose the arrow even though I used the taxi teleport. The arrow still stays. And if you want to get rid of the arrow, like I said earlier, just go to the top right of the buff bar and then right click that and it'll, it, it'll remove it. That's how you remove buffs in this game. So just a little FYI tip. If you want to remove a buff that you activated, just right click it on the buff bar on the top right. And you can see that my buff bar has like some weird thing going on. And that's because I have another character on this account that's giving me a link skill. So like I said earlier, if you are starting to get to know this game and you start to feel comfortable with navigating MapleStory and you want to learn more about the game's concepts, like something broad like link skills, there are many guides for that. A lot of people make guides like that in MapleStory where it's like broad concepts, you know, giving you this information. I felt like we needed a different type of guide. We needed a guide that just showed you like how to play the game, <laughs> what what buttons to press, where to go, you know? And so I've made it to the map that I want to be at. I overshot and I clicked the wrong map, but this is actually the one that I want to be at. And so since I don't need that arrow anymore, as you can see, I just right clicked it on the top right. You might not see those other skills like I have going on, but just know that as you get more link skills in this game, look that up guys, link skills, take note of that on your little notepad. Link skills are going to give you more damage to these mobs, to bosses, and it's basically, I would say the largest chunk of damage in the early stages of the game is link skills. And then as you progress a little bit further past like the very start of the game, Legion will give you a lot of damage. And then once your links and Legion is done, you basically are going to get most of your damage from your gear and star forcing your gear, which we're going to talk about a little bit in this video as well. But right now, if you're starting to feel overwhelmed by what I'm saying, you can take note of some of the words that I threw out there like star force, link skills, legion. But right now, if you're just trying to like get started with knowing how to hunt mobs, just focus on that. So our level goal is actually level 30 because that's when we're going to get our next job advancement. So as you can see in the beginning stage of the game, they gave you your first job 
at level 10. And so that is pretty standard for all classes in MapleStory for 2023. If you played MapleStory like way back in the day, when this game like was old, old school, you'd had to get to level eight to job advance as a magician, but that rule doesn't apply anymore. Pretty much every class in this game has their first job advancement at level 10. And then level 30 is for second job. Level 60 is for the third job, which is also kind of new. In a sense, if you haven't played this game in like maybe 15 plus years, um, because back in the day it had to be level 70 for your third job, but not anymore. Level 60 is your third job. And then at level 100, you'll get your fourth job. And then at level 200, your class just completely, completely changes a lot of the time and you get your fifth job, which is gonna have a lot of cool skills. So I'm not gonna be able to show you all of that. I feel like showcasing all of the skills, we can't do that in this video, right? But there are so many videos out there that are gonna be able to showcase all of your skills. A lot of people on their YouTube channels have uploaded like, oh, full class walkthrough or class showcase. A lot of the time they'll show you how they boss, what skills to use in certain rotations, depending on what kind of information they include in the guide. And so I would highly suggest that if a class looks interesting to you, don't take the advice in the MapleStory homepage where it shows you the stats and then the description. I would really, really look up these classes on YouTube to see which one looks the most visually appealing to you. So instead of looking at that stat page or the description that they have for you when you're first choosing your job, like in the home screen, don't don't listen to that. Like that always isn't accurate. The balancing with the skills in this game is, I don't know, it changes all the time. And so what they say there, I wouldn't trust that. I would definitely trust those videos on YouTube that I was talking about, you know, class showcase this, class showcase that, bossing video, you know, showcase whatever it is, because that's how you're gonna be able to learn about the class that you wanna play um, without actually playing it, right? And then you actually create it and you get a feel for it for yourself. And then once you do get that personal feel for it, that's how you're going to really know if you want to main this class or not, right? However, let's say you choose a class and you're like, oh, I don't like this anymore, but I'm too I'm too deep into it. Don't worry about it. Just, just abandon it because all progress in this game is progress. Just know that if you abandon a character, you have boosted up your legion power. You have boosted up your link skills, right? You can also use those characters that you abandoned as meals in the future. So it's okay. I would just choose the class that feels right for you. And so if you're having trouble finding a main, here are some pieces of advice that I would go with for choosing a main. Number one, choose whatever looks visually appealing to you because a lot of this game, you're just sitting here looking at your computer screen, right? Farming, farming these mobs, farming these mesos. So you're gonna be sitting down with your character for like long, long hours, right? And you just wanna make sure that you don't hate what you're looking at, right? <laughs> so I would be vain about it and just choose whatever looks visually appealing. Most classes are balanced in this game, except certain classes, especially with the version of MapleStory we play in America, GMS, and also Europe plays this version. Uh, they have some European servers, and also people all around the world play this server. But what's unique to our server is that we have classes such as Kana, Hayato and Beast Tamer, which are exclusive to our region. O other regions in MapleStory, um, such as Japanese MapleStory, they have some of the classes and, you know, it depends on the server. But as I'm trying to say, there are special classes in the server that we're playing in. And so those classes, because it's not in the base game in Korea, they don't balance around these classes very well because they have different teams and different developers, blah, blah, blah. Who knows what the cahoots are of MapleStory, but that's just how it is, right? And so because of that, I highly advise picking those characters. Even if you like it, I think the classes balancing is just like too bad to want to put up with. But other than that, other than those classes and maybe Cannoneer, I don't know. Other than those classes, um, I would generally just be satisfied with anything else. So if Bishop looks cool to you, pick Bishop. If Corsair looks cool to you, pick Corsair. As you can see, I'm trying to use my double shot <laughs> and I try to equip my gun, but then, oh no, I forgot the freaking, uh, I forgot the bullets. No, it's okay. Uh, I dropped the bullets, if you remember that. I was showing you guys how to drop an item. <laughs> so stupid. But anyways, like I'm saying, 
these classes are just not that balanced, but everything else pretty much is. But I'm going to choose Buccaneer. I actually don't have a Buccaneer on this account, so that's why I thought it would be the perfect class for us to just walk through together in a video like this. And also, Buccaneer has just become an insanely popular class, especially thanks to this like one really popular content creator, Iceling Guns, which I highly recommend you check out his progression series on Reboot because it's going to explain to you how to get strong very, very quickly. Even by doing it solo progression, he was able to do it very, very quickly. So you can do parties in this game. You can party up with other people. However, doing solo progression is an option, but solo progression just makes things so much harder. And so if you watch his videos and you want to follow what he's doing, even if you do it in a non-solo progression way, you can basically follow his concepts and pr principles of how to reach endgame. I think the, the way Kobe in his video reached endgame so quickly is that he focused on one character first, tried to get it to as high of a level he could, and then along the way when there were events that came about, he would make a boss meal or two, and he basically just focused on one character and one character only. And now he's able to contribute and basically solo all of the game's relevant bosses for now. It's pretty cool. So I would highly suggest checking out Kobe's progression series. His progression series if you watch his videos, it's going to give you a high level introduction on how to progress in the end game. So my video, though, is just showing you kind of like a guide on how to navigate MapleStory. We just reached level 30. Level 30 is important because we're going to get our second job advancement. And you can see on the left side, we have a bunch of different icons. And I'm going to click the light bulb one. So that way we can do our quest. So the light bulb is for quest. And then the other ones aren't too important right now. There's like event things that you can check out. There are reward points, familiars, but just the top two, light bulb and star, those are the two most important ones. But let's just focus on getting our quest done so that way we can get our second job. So because I clicked yes on that screen, it told me, do you want to showcase your skills and your options so this is buccaneer this is the one that i'm gonna choose and then we have corsair which uses a gun kind of cool kind of cool and then we have cannoneer we can't choose cannoneer because we chose the basic explore sub branch but if you scroll more down the window and the home page there is a cannoneer option if that looks cool to you so now she's telling me do you want to choose a Buccaneer or a Corsair? And I'm going to choose Buccaneer, and she's just asking me to confirm. And there we go. We have our second job advancement. So now that we can go to tab number two in the skill keybind window, like remember, we have K for our skills, and we're going to see all of our new skills that we have as a brawler second job. So the mopping skill is usually always the first skill in the list. So we're going to replace our keybind with that. And we also have some other things, pretty random things like passive buffs, we have attack speed, attack, knockback resistance, all this different sorts of stuff, you know. But I'm just going to focus on mobbing right now because leveling is just the most important. So we're going to do our mobbing skill and maybe something that gives us, gives us some damage. Okay, so going through my skills, I see this vortex jump, which is going to allow me to up jump. So if I hold my arrow up and then, you know, jump, it's going to allow me to jump. I have to double, tap, double tap my jump to do that. In addition to my flash jump, it's pretty cool. Pretty much all classes in this game have up jumps now. And I'm still looking through my skills and there are some passive things that I wanna look into like knuckle mastery. Knuckle mastery is gonna allow us to do you know, more damage. So something that I really wanna unlock is my agile knuckles, but as you can see, it's grayed out. And it's grayed out because I need to get my knuckle mastery to level five first, as you see, it's a required skill, Knuckle Mastery level five. And so some skills will have prerequisites like that. So just make sure to, you know, take note of those. So attack speed is just gonna allow us to attack faster and that's gonna make the game feel more fluid. But for now, let's continue on with our journey. So I'm gonna go back to the quests. And as you can see in the quest tab, there is Gold Beach, Theme Dungeon, LNL, Fairy Academy, Rihanna straight, get it straight. And these are all pretty cool theme dungeons that you can do 
from level 30 to level 70, I would say, if you're in the early game, like this is your first time on the account. But up to level 60 is also good too. I would just stay and I would just do all of them. If this was like your first time play, playing this game, I would just do all of them because the first three on that list can give you some good items. So as you're going to see, when we finish this one, we're going to get some gear, which I would say is pretty helpful in the early game. So it's just telling me what the quest is all about, blah, blah, blah. And I'm using my NPC chat to just, you know, zoom through these dialogues. And I'm going to go here because that's where it wants me to do on the bottom left. And then as you're going to see, we're going to enter this forest. It looks pretty cool. Theme Dungeon LNL Fairy Academy. Nice. Looks really, really beautiful here. And so we have this cat here. He kind of reminds me of the um, Alice in Wonderland cat. And so we're going to see this quest, blah, blah, blah. He's asking me, are you a good swimmer? Hmm, my name is Bikini Bottom, and I'm a buccaneer. So I would say, yeah, I'm a pretty good swimmer. So we're going to accept that quest, and then he's telling me, go jump in the water. But, oh my god, I drowned, no! And so in order to actually walk on the water, we have to get some magic, and we need some help from this little cat. So he's going to ask me to kill these mobs, and so we can get to these mobs on the left here by going into this portal. So I'm going to use my new second job mobbing skill. Pretty cool, pretty cool. So the quest is asking me to collect some items, particularly these leaves. I need 15 of them, the little orange guys on the bottom. So we're going to just hunt mobs until we get that done. Water! So I finished hunting the leaves. And so now we have a new quest, which is going to ask me to get three starlight crystals from Radiant Lake Path to 3. So we're going to continue on. Go all the way to the left side to the last Radiant Path map. So we can use our world map. I have that key bound to, you know, that little dash thing on the top left of the keyboard. And then we can see the map names and everything like that. Using your map is actually very helpful in this game. That's how you're going to navigate to most things in the world. Especially later down the line once you get a hyper teleport rock, which is just going to allow you to click on a map and then... You can teleport straight there in most cases. Um, until you get that, um, you're kind of just walking around manually. But I don't mind doing that. I don't mind walking manually sometimes, especially in a theme dungeon like this. It's pretty easy. But later down the line, you pretty much always have a hyper teleport rock. You can purchase it with Meso. So we got a little crystal. Nice. We got two of them and three of them. Cool. So let's go back to the little kitty. Little kitty kitty. Comment down below, cat person or dog person? Over the years, I was like scared of animals when I was a little kid. But then we got a dog and I like fell in love with dogs. And then I started having a lot of friends who managed to have some cats. And I realized I'm allergic. But even though I'm allergic, I like love them. They're so freaking cool. So I don't know, I think I'm team cat. Especially with my main character's IGN, leopard print. I think I'm team cat. Kitty cat. All right, so we're going to continue on with this quest. And so we can see there's a quest right here. I'm just going to click it since she's so far. I don't want to go walk over there and press my NPC chat. So I'm just holding down NPC chat with my keybind. And I got to this next quest, which is going to ask me to go to Above the Lake 1 and hunt some monsters so that way we can find his little book. Cootie's Plant Encyclopedia. So the concept and story behind this theme dungeon is that there is this fairy academy, which is kind of like, I don't know, Harry Potter or something, really don't know. But there's this fairy academy that has some students missing, and basically our job is to find clues as to why the students are missing. So along the way, we're going to be talking to this NPC called Cootie, and Cootie basically is going to be our guide along the way. So we're going to talk to him for the majority of the quests. And so the first thing he wants us to do is pick up this encyclopedia from these mobs. And I haven't gotten any luck with the one. If you're lucky, you'll get it pretty fast. <laughs> oh my god, I got a new weapon. I think that's a weapon. Do you hear these birds? Oh my god, they are loud. Dude, and it's 12.30 in the morning. Oh, when I leveled. How are these birds awake? Aren't they like powered by the sun? 
Solar powered government drones. How are you even alive? So we haven't gotten the book yet. Surprising. Ooh, there it is. There's two of them. No way. <laughs> okay, we got it. All right, let's go back to town to talk to uh, Mr. Cootie. Did you guys have cooties as a kid? Because if you did, that's embarrassing. All right, since we leveled up a bit, let's do some more skills. And so I'm going to assign some skills. And you can see that you can assign skills like in bulk or you can do it one by one by using those little levers. And so now that I've done Knuckle Mastery to level 5, we now have Agile Knuckles, which is a passive skill. So you don't need to keybind this to anything. You can see I'm like dragging it, trying to click it and drag it, but it's just a passive. This used to be a active skill that you had to keybind, but now there are a lot of passive skills in the game. So if you don't know if something is a passive or not, just like hover over the items or the skills, hover over the skills and then see if you can keybind them or not. And if you can't, that's pretty much your sign. Oh yeah, this is a passive skill. So we're going to do more knuckle mastery. That's just going to allow us to do some more damage. And what else can we do? We can do knockback resistance because that's pretty cool. Every time a monster hits you, there's a chance that it'll knock you back. And so having knockback resistance maxed up is pretty important. So let's continue on with these quests now that we got our skills a little bit more managed. And now we're just going to have to um, find, let's see... Cootie's report page, Mystic Wisp. Now it wants us to kill some more mon monsters. Damn, those birds are kind of going crazy, dude. They want to be in the video so bad. These monsters are going to drop these report pages. So use your little keybind for item pickup. Just collect these. And we got to level up. Nice. The game is so easy. <laughs> Everyone says this game's hard, man. Bro, you boomed one item, 17 to 18, and you say this game's hard. Okay. Chip, 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 chip. Dude, these birds are driving me crazy, dude. Every night. Every night. All right, let's continue with this quest. Oh, oh the quest asked me a question there. That's why I said, oh. <laughs> because if you, sometimes if you answer questions wrong in this game, it'll want you to uh, talk to the NPC again until you get the right answer. So let's uh, see this one too. Like if we click the wrong answer, I have no idea. This is hard. I think that sounds like the answer, right? Totally logical. It says, what are you? What use are you then? You're supposed to be coming up with the ideas here. Dude, this guy's kind of rude. He has cooties. All right, let's talk to him again. Let's see what the right answer is. So he's asking us like, how, how can we find the clues? And then let's see, find the children and ask where they hid the things, but they're lost. How will we find the children and then ask them? They must be nearby. We should look around. That sounds like a more casual response. Like, let's just go with that. Okay, now he wants us to do some item hunting from these monsters here in the map. And so these monsters are going to drop these little notes. And the notes, they are some items that you can use. And so opening the notes... It just has like what the students say. And if you see that there's a blue message, that means you've got gotten the the secret to where the kids might be. So let's go ahead and turn that quest in now that we've found the clue. And then we're going to get another level up. So we're leveling up pretty fast in this theme dungeon, which is pretty awesome. And so that's why I really recommend theme dungeons when you're in the early game, because it's just such a such a nice way of getting some EXP. So now the quest is going to ask us to follow the clue and then look at the dormitories. And the answer that we're looking for is all the way on the right. So you have to do some map hunting around here to find the clue. But since I already did this theme dungeon before, I'm basically spoiling the answer. <laughs> but that's probably what you're looking for. You're looking for a, a guide to follow, right? No one wants to just be sitting here all day. We want to get to the end game, right? We want to fight the bosses. We want to hunt the cool mobs. We want to get our fifth job. So if you don't know, yesterday they unleashed the test server in Korea, which is going to come to us in terms of game content in the winter patch for us in GMS. And basically they released the sixth job in the test server. So a lot of the Korean players were able to test out the new skills. So pretty soon coming to us in winter, if we get to level 260, we're going to unlock a sixth job, which is pretty huge for this game. Anyways, enough with that. Let's talk about this quest again. It's basically pretty much the same thing, except now we're looking for the schoolgirl notes. And so the original notes we were looking at were for the boys. And now let's look at the schoolgirl notes. 
as you can see they're pink oh my god not them reinforcing the heteropatriarchy oh my god not them <gasps> what will we do i don't know i gotta reach level 200 all right dude i'm getting so unlucky in the last quest i hit it in two notes this is taking me so long these girls are gatekeeping their notes all right let's see we got two more to pick up <laughs> come on come on come on dude this game is so gambly as you will learn Okay, we finally got it. Let's talk to Mr. Coots. Me and Coots are in cahoots. Damn, say that five times fast. So the the last clue in the dormitory is gonna be all the way in the left for the girls quest. And so, and so yeah, that's how you can complete that quest. So let's talk to Mr. Cootie again. And after we talk to Mr. Cootie, he's actually gonna take us to the town again. So we're gonna wanna go to the main town. Just trace your steps back if you need help go to the world map so that way you can see where to go so as you can see i maxed out my knockback resistance now that's pretty cool and we have three skill points left and i'm gonna put them let's see let's see let's put them in dark clarity which is going to give me some more attack power i guess that seems useful but again don't worry about doing things in the correct order eventually all skills will be maxed like that's pretty unique in terms of game design for maple story in comparison to other games is like you can't do a certain build with a certain class. It's like every character that has the same class is going to have all all of the same skills maxed. So let's do this quest, do this quest, and it's telling us we're going to be moved to Alinea if we accept this quest. And so we have to talk to some fairies. So the first fairy is in the top right. going to talk to her, Arwen the fairy. She's a pretty old school NPC. She's been in the game so long. And then this other one, Rowan the fairy, her too, her too. That's on the bottom right. And then the last person we need to talk to is not a fairy, but she's Miss Betty. Oh, Miss Betty. And then she takes us to the town again. So let's go ahead and report back with our findings. And with our findings, that's going to give us a better clue with our directional sonar on how to find these kids. So these kids... Oh my god. We hear something <gasps> scary. But again, we're just skipping all of the dialogue. We don't care how scary it is. Oh my god. All night. All night, these fairies... I, I mean these birds. Oh my god, fairies, birds, I'm confused. <laughs> okay, so we proceed with this quest by using the portal on the right, and now Mr. Cootie wants to take out 100 onion -y monsters, and then that's pretty much it. We don't have to collect any of the drops, which is pretty nice. I like that, I like that. That makes it pretty easy. And so we just need a mob. Kill some, kill some monsters, kill some mobs. So in addition to this video getting you comfortable with just navigating the maple world and what to do, I'm also giving you like an early game leveling guide that I tend to follow. This is the trend with all of my characters that I'm leveling up. Um, sometimes characters, you get them to level 30 just by doing the prequests, um, because a lot of the times other classes have their own unique prequests up to level 30, and so you get to level 30 pretty much passively through quests. Other classes, you have to grind them out, but... Um, for the explorer, you can get to level 30 pretty much freely. So at level 30, you can pretty much follow this same thing that I'm doing, doing the theme dungeon. You can do like two theme dungeons and a half to get you to level 60, but sometimes in the early game, I just like to do all of the theme dungeons for characters that I might want more gear on. But again, it really doesn't matter as long as you reach your goals. So this quest next told us to go in this portal and then save those kids. So we did that. And now we got to move on to the next map. Cool, cool, cool. And now we have these radish monsters. Or turnips. I think they're turnips. Yeah, turny pies. Let's kill some turny pies. 100 turny pies. Okay, and 100 of these turnipies are killed. And so now let's proceed with the quest and Mr. Cootie is going to open up the portal for us just like he did in the last map and he is going to take us here and we're going to have to kill turnips again to save these kids so we're slowly but surely finding all of the kids so now that we've saved those kids let's go on and continue on with the rest of the quest we're pretty much at the end now so as we can see in this next room it's just Mr. Cootie all alone no mobs and it's kind of ominous what's going to be behind this door <gasps> The Mole King Lair. Oh no, it's a little boss. One tap, easy, but we found the last two kids. Cool. 
So we finished the theme dungeon. Let's go ahead and accept the final part. Now we have to talk to these people. Everyone's all together. It's a happy occasion. Woo! Cool. Now we have the rewards from the completing the quest. So we have a medal. We have some wings. We have an eye accessory. We have spell traces, which we can sell for mesos. And they also give us some mesos, which is pretty cool. So we're done with the rest of the quest. And there's a... Another little quest that you can do. Doesn't really give you any rewards, but might as well just complete that. I think that's like the final chapter of the quest. And so now we have these gloves. Hmm, gloves. Hmm, eye accessory. Eye accessory is good, but the gloves doesn't beat out our current gloves. And then we have this weapon, which is a level 40 weapon. And that's pretty much it. We got to level 42 in an hour. And so let's do one last thing. With our new weapon, I don't need the damage, but let me just show you what Star Forcing is. Star Forcing is actually the main gear upgrade system in this game. And I got to the Star Force window by clicking on the bottom right of my item inventory, that little red button. And so as you can see, after clicking this red button, I can put items into this window and I can start upgrading them. And you don't have to do this for this early in the game for your damage but as you can see i just want to show you what the system is like so basically what you're doing with this system is giving your gear stars so depending on the item level you can actually get more stars than other items so this low level item it caps out at five stars however there are other items that go all the way to 25 stars and those are the real items that you really want to get later down the line and so, Fairy Mark, nice, we upgraded that. I really didn't need the damage, but I just wanted to show you how you can upgrade your gear. I know we talked about potentials earlier with that little red line around your item, but Star Force is actually, I would say, the most fun system in the game. <laughs> Sitting there cubing your items and you doing your potentials, I guess it's somewhat fun, but it's, there's no hype around it, you know? So Star Forcing is really, really cool in the end game. So that's it. That's been an hour of Maple Story. And so I got to level 42, but whatever you got to in your first hour is progress. This game is a marathon, not a sprint. And so don't worry if you're not doing things in the optimal way. So if you found this of value to you, make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel. And also I would highly recommend stopping by and saying hi to me on twitch.tv slash maplebinge. So that way I can explain things to you in a live setting because a lot of these learning opportunities are going to come from the Twitch stream. And so, unfortunately, I can't explain the entire game in a full YouTube series. That would just take way too long. But in the Twitch streams, I can actually give you some one-on-one -on -one advice. So that's all I'm going to say for that one. Stay tuned to the next episode, and I'll see you later, bench.